ain't gonna show up because they showed up a couple of millions of years ago and you the motherfucker sitting in the room. You the goddamn idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't understand this shit here, you wasting your damn time. And that's the reason why you say yeah. We ain't from here. Yeah. Yeah. And we are from here. Yeah. We hung this planet here to hang out. And these other people were manufactured by us. <laughs> and at the end of the day, all the truth is gonna have to come out. So, we're deeper than they want to even start trying to touch them. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there is one image there that shows black people getting off. So people with dark skin getting off. No, not black. Black skin. Really black. I think that's what happened. I think somebody came here a long time ago and created us. And they're still with us. Sovereign's name, incidentally, and in the old Phoenician ancient Canaanite religion um, in the Middle East, the old Phoenician Canaanite worship of the planet Saturn was the most important god of all the ancient world was the planet Saturn and his symbol long before the Hebrews were ever in Cana. The symbol in Cana for the planet Saturn was a six-pointed star. Today we call that, today we call that star the star of, of David. There was no star of David. It's the star of Saturn. All of the Jewish reference books, all the Encyclopedia Judica, all of, uh, you go to the synagogue, uh, go up into uh, Mulholland Drive, up to the Jewish University and spend three weeks there and look up Saturn. You'll find out that 98% of all Judaism is a worship of the planet Saturn. You better wake up and understand where this stuff comes from. We, we, we tend to feel that the Egyptians and the people from that area of Africa and, and Europe somehow or another got over here to South America because we still have the same pyramids and the same uh, symbolism. We find the same symbolism in Central and South America we find in, in, in the, the Middle East. And so obviously, they, they came from the Middle East and, uh, and Egypt and Africa across to, uh, to South and Central America. I'm saying, uh-uh, maybe not. Maybe it started in Central America and South America and went to that way. Why, why do you, and I am totally convinced in my own mind <clears throat> that the most ancient cultures on the face of the earth, as in South America and Central America, probably a hundred thousand years old or more, in, in Peru and the Brazil and that whole area of the world, I think is just replete with ancient stuff that far, far exceeds anything Egypt ever did. <clears throat> so. I'm seeing that there's a whole world of, uh, of questions that we've never been allowed to ask. I think the Central and South America is the epitome of ancient civilizations. I don't even know, uh, I don't think that the ancient Mayas and the Aztecs and those people, those are the ones we know of. I think that there were some very old ones. They were called the Phoenicians, and by the time they founded Carthage, they had already made their mark on world history. It's no accident, for instance, that words like phone and phonetics sound a lot like the word Phoenician. That's because the Phoenicians were one of the first to develop the spoken word into an actual written language. In fact, they were among the first to form sounds into written characters, creating an alphabet. Remnants of the Phoenician alphabet have survived even today in the language of one of the smallest countries in the world, the island of Malta. Not a bad shelf life for a language over 3,000 years old. But just who were these Phoenicians? The Bible refers to them as the Canaanites. It's something big, something strange, and something never seen in the universe before.
Saturn, the solar system's most bizarre yet beautiful planet, has just gotten even more mysterious. In 1979, the Voyager spacecraft showed a perfect geometric form over the North Pole. In October 2006, the Cassini craft found that it is still there. It's just bizarre, and it sits there kind of still. It doesn't move the planet. The pole, there's a hexagonal feature, a six-sided polygon that encircles the pole at about 78 degrees north latitude. And it's sitting there as a set feature. The hexagon is similar to Earth's polar vortex, which has winds blowing in a circular fashion around the pole. Saturn's vortex can fit four Earths inside of it and extend 60 miles deep. star required calculations based on decades of astronomical observations. Minute shifts in the position of the giant Sirius led astronomers to suspect the gravitational influence of an unseen comet. Sigi is the most important ceremony in Dogon life. The Sigi is an event relating directly to the sacred star. The Sigi marks the completion of an orbit, the time when Earth, the giant Sirius, and the sacred star are directly aligned. Here there are one of three possibilities. A, that they have supernatural knowledge or extrasensory perception. B, perhaps they've been visited by creatures from outer space. Or C, that the whole thing is coincidence. phrase by the way in the Hebrew especially it implies that they just the wives didn't have much choice about it they took them wives of all which they chose and uh, so now what about this word sons of God in the Hebrew it's Meneha Elohim, ha Elohim sons of God but it's a phrase to understand what it means we need to examine the rest of the Bible and you'll discover something interesting that phrase is used of a direct creation of God. He's interpreting this vision. He says, Whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Whoops. Wait a minute. What did he say? See, the they, it's a person. The clay represents some kind of people. 
they, it's my claim, they, to switch to a personal pronoun, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. In order to mingle with the seed of men, they have to be something other than the seed of men. Or does it's, I have had, I've had this checked by experts. That's what the Hebrew requires. Whatever they are, they're not the seed of men. What are they? I don't know. Are they Nephilim? Unnatural offspring is the, is the final nail in the coffin of the Sethite thing, the, the, the supernatural offering. The, 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 the text implies that the offering, the Nephilim, were the mighty men, the Hagabarim. And, uh, if we understand the Nephilim as the Nephilim, the giant Nephilim, the group of giant knees, aka the Negroes, were the mighty men, the Hagabarim. Men of renown, right? No one renown. He mentions mighty men and then the X chromosome. He's, he's embedding the X-Men here, the mutation. This is the Christ bloodline. The Gnostic cross is the X-Men logo. You just have to view it askew. You know, the Pistis Sophia is also known as the askew codex. But this is talking about what I consider the most absurd war imaginable. All wars are bad, of course. Some are justified, some aren't. But the most ridiculous war is this one that it's talking about. I can understand people not believing in God. I can understand people uh, being disobedient to God. What I cannot imagine in my mind is the world knowingly taking up arms against God. But that's what's going to happen. Cosmic threat. General MacArthur said that. Reagan said it three times in public speeches. Many people missed that. But one thing will unite this world will be a threat from the outside. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against who? Against the Lord and his anointed. That's what the word Christ means. Familiar. Giant knee phylum, the group of giant knees, a.k.a. the Negroes. This is the Christ bloodline. If you don't understand this shit here, you're wasting your damn time.